Hello and welcome to the full episode for The Longest Johns. We start with the band's debut album, Written in Salt, <gasps> released in 2016 and it was self-released and I can only presume that it was also self-produced. I don't really have a lot to say for this one so we'll just go to the first song titled Barge Ballad and yeah, let's try and unpack this a little bit differently. There's no instruments except on the just instrumental tracks, but there's really good vocal harmonies that go between everyone and there's good timing in those as well. The lyrics have a fancy theme, almost a swashbuckling and seafaring nature that gave me vibes off the Black Flag soundtrack, which just makes me want to listen to that again. The performances are pretty solid with all four men knowing their places and their riffing and work rate are pretty solid as well. The production is really good with a nice direction of things and a very clean feeling that really gives the main core of the sound a lot of polish. The structuring can suffer from a few really short songs, which isn't great across 13 tracks, but the pacing is well mixed up and there's some damn fun tricks pulled out too. My favourite song goes to Old Maui. The album takes an odd stance with a sound I'm not familiar with, but there's a well-executed concept, good cohesion, and a really nice sense of fun, so I can't fault it. Next is the band's second album, Between Wind and Water, released in 2018. It was again self-released and probably also self-produced again, probably. They may have been touring in between, but this album was their first and only with Anna Cornish, so do with that what you will. The album starts with the song Haul Away Joe, and this is about the same as you would expect. The vocal harmonies are still really good, with more background voices being added to create a new dynamic to the sound. The lyrics stick to the themes of being sea shanty songs, again focused on seafaring fantasy and a bar song storytelling feel. The performance is good too, with Anna adding a lot to the group, and I honestly wish she got more chances to join on this one because it is her only album with them. The production is again good, with not a lot really needing to change, and the voice is feeling like a good focus once again. The structuring is odd as it's got two more songs than their debut, but they manage the time a little bit better here, and everyone gets to shine through as well. My favourite song goes to Banks of Newfoundland. Between Wind and Water is another solid bit of fun, and just a good continuation of what they already established on their debut, which I sort of like. And finally is the band's third album, Cures What Ails You. Released in 2020, it would be their last independent release, and hey, it was probably produced by them again. Who knows? I really hate not having any background for albums, but I think this is their first album with Robbie Satin. I... I think. Anyway, the album begins with Hoist Up The Thing. <laughs> yes, that is the actual name of the song, and this is a different direction already. Mostly as this is the first full album to have instruments with the vocals on some of the songs. And they actually fit pretty well, adding a good layered vibe to things. The lyrics haven't changed much, focused on sea shanty stuff and the like, but if it ain't broke, don't fix it, I see. The performances are solid, with everyone having good range still and riffing off of each other wonderfully with their singing, as they usually do. The production is again as clean as you would expect, with the sounds of the instruments making a welcome addition to that front. The structure has the band's usual style and bounce, with the new riffs adding a fresh feeling dynamic to the vocals. My favourite song goes to Oka okay, Nash and Thorn. Here's what else yeah adds some new stuff to the band's sound while still being a good mixture of their best qualities and honestly it can only go up from here. So that's it for another much shorter episode of Backtracking. It was one of the more unique ones I've done and not just because I knew little about the band but I don't usually go after either folk or acapella genres. But it was a fun episode to do and it's nice to broaden my horizons every now and then. As for my next episode it will be We Came As Romans as requested by my friend Kempson again. As for what's uh, next in the future. The PBW vs AVW Go Home Show for Defy the Gods 3 tonight, and at some point this week, another episode of Music of the Week, and probably a Fire Night Review this weekend if there's a UFC card. Uh, so, yeah, that's about really all I have planned for the future, and as always, thank you for watching, you're awesome. Bye bye.